Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, today we will continue talking about um, radio transmission. In particular, we will talk about one particular way to uh, communicate through radio waves. Uh, it's called frequency modulation. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website rather than from some other source where you can find it, like YouTube, for instance, um, because all the lectures are combined basically into course. Well, there are two courses, actually. There is a prerequisite, <coughs> prerequisite course, Mass for Teens, organized in exactly the same way. So you can always reference one lecture from another, plus every lecture has very detailed notes and uh, sometimes with pictures, much better than whatever I can draw here, obviously. Um, and there are problems solving and there are exams for those who want. And uh, the website is uh, totally free. There are no ads, no strings attached. You don't even have to uh, sign in if you don't want to. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, frequency modulation. Now, we were, we were talking about amplitude uh, uh, modulation before. This is one of the ways to transmit certain information, like sound. Let's talk about sound. Um, to transmit sound through radio waves because radio waves by themselves um, do not carry any information. It's just oscillations of electromagnetic uh, field. Now, the source of these oscillations is something like LC circuit, which combines inducting inductor, capacitor, and the uh, electric current will just circulate back and forth, oscillate, uh, and we're talking about why it happens with certain frequency. If this is capacitance C, this is capacitance L, the frequency, uh, angular frequency is equal to, and it emits, obviously, um, radio waves if you can combine it with antenna through so some kind of a transformer here. And this is the grounding. So this is basically a schema of transmitter, the first transmitter. Obviously, it's much more complex right now. So the oscillations by themselves do not carry any information. But if you would like to transmit voice, for example, you have to somehow modify these oscillations, something like to code information in, into it, or to modulate, as uh, they're saying, modulation, um, s sound signal onto uh, the um, oscillations of electromagnetic uh, field produced by transmitter. So, the first idea which we were talking about before was amplitude uh, modulation, which is very, very natural kind of way. So whenever you have a sound, or some, some kind of a source um, of, of sound, uh, obviously we are using microphone to transform it into oscillations of current in some circuit. And now we have to basically apply those oscillations, oscillations of sound, onto the oscillations of this circuit. And then they will go, instead of this way, these are unmodulated oscillations of this particular thing, with a particular frequency. Instead, if there is some kind of a sound which is much more, l mi much less frequently oscillating um, molecules of air and therefore current in some circuit produced by a microphone. So we are modifying amplitude in sync with modification. So this is higher, so we'll have a greater amplitude. This is lower, we'll have lower amplitude. And this is a higher again. So the waves of the sound 
will be corresponding to waves of the amplitude. This is kind of a very first idea which came to people's mind. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem are that it's not very easy to um, basically get into every little detail of a sound. Now, this is a very nice and smooth sound. Now, a real sound, like if you, for instance, have an orchestra playing, you have many different instruments. Every one of them has its own oscillations of air molecules. Now, every oscillation is um, described by, let's say, something like D cosine omega t plus phi where A is amplitude, omega is the uh, angular frequency of oscillations, and phi is even some kind of a shift. Maybe one instrument starts earlier than another. So if you combine, let's say, 10 or 20 different uh, sinusoidal oscillations with different A's, different omegas, and different phi, you will get a really kind of chaotic graph here which represents the oscillations of air because everything is finally the oscillations of air which microphone is sensing and converts into oscillations of current uh, which is supposed to be somehow modulating um, this uh, uh, constant frequency of uh, signal produced by this, contour, by, by, by this uh, LC circuit. So. Again, that was the first idea to use this type of a, uh, amplitude mod uh, modulation, and it had certain problems. The problems are mostly related to the quality. Apparently, the higher um, frequency of sound oscillation, the more difficult it is to inscribe somehow um, this higher frequency um, into every detail of, of, of the sound. Plus, there is something which is called radio noise. So, the devices which are built uh, on amplitude uh, modulation are very sensitive to noise. Now, what it means is that we probably can um, successfully transmit certain um, types of sound, but not all of them. The higher um, the uh, pitch of the sound, which means the higher frequency of oscillations, the higher, the uh, greater uh, omega, the more difficult it is to inscribe our high frequency um, radio signal into every curve of the sound. So. Let me talk about numbers. The sound which our ear can actually sense is from 20 to 20,000 hertz, which means oscillations per second. Um, now, let's talk about kilohertz. It's, it's more convenient. So, our ear can sense from 20 in kilohertz is 0 0.020 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's our ear. Now, the musical instruments are not actually up to 20 kilohertz. Um, 15 is considered to be relatively high for any musical instrument because the ear is more sensitive than the highest note produced by regular instruments. Now, if we are talking about the amplitude uh, modulation, then the frequency of um, LC circuit produced, the frequency of ba uh, carrier um, uh, radio signal, is from 540 to 1600 kilohertz. So this is significantly higher than, th higher than this. Why? 
because we would like to inscribe actually these high frequency into lower frequency to reflect every little detail of the of the of the sound wave so that's why it's much higher now but apparently even with this particular um, standard of uh, AM communication we can represent up to 4.4 kilohertz sound frequency not to 20 not even to 15 which is the highest musical note produced by musical instruments and uh, obviously the human voice is, is even lower than that but this is the maximum which usually is represented with decent quality everything else will be distorted so <coughs> this actually puts some kind of an upper limit to AM transmission it's good for voice so that's why for instance the news uh, radio stations are mostly AM um, and uh, something about hi-fi uh, no hi-fi is not really well transmitted uh, through AM uh, amp amplitude modu uh, modulation so we need another idea and I was talking many times that it's probably much more difficult to come up with very first idea than to subsequently develop it into uh, the real product for instance so there was a person I forgot his name who invented a different type of um, changing the carrier signal by sound waves in such a way that it's it's still decipherable on another uh, demodulated on another side on the receiver side but it's uh, it's a different kind of a communication which allows to represent a higher quality sound now the idea is instead of changing the amplitude of the bass carrier let's consider the bass carrier always that's not good that it's always on, a, on, on, on the same um, frequency that's the frequency which is produced by the corresponding LC circuit of that particular transmitter it's tuned by L and C by inductance and by uh, capacitance of the components and other components obviously it's much more complex than just simple two, um, uh, uh, two parts now what he suggested this person so whenever you have a higher sound we will make this frequency a little bit tighter a little bit not by much but whenever signal is low the frequency will be lower and then the frequency when again sound goes up the frequency again will increase so amplitude will be the same but the frequency of oscillations will be slightly changed around the base frequency this particular transmitter is supposed to be transmitting information so whenever you're saying that one particular radio station FM frequency modulation uh, radio station transmits on certain frequency it actually means that it deviates from this main frequency um, back and forth up and down a little bit within certain boundaries and these deviations are sufficient to uh, basically um, represent sound much better to uh, uh, I think up to 15 up to 15 kilohertz so much higher which basically is sufficient to represent all musical instruments and high in high five uh, quality so this is a very important idea which came to mind somebody now how can we accomplish this now with amplitude uh, oscillation all we need is to change the amplitude of the 
um, current which circulates in the LC current in, in, in LC circuit. So, whenever you have a higher sound, AM modulation just allows more current to go through. Whenever the sound is lower, we are probably uh, using something like a, a variable resistor to change the current in the um, LLC circuit. And that produces corresponding changes in the signal which is emitted by the antenna. In this particular case, we should not touch the amplitude. We should really touch the frequency. Now, the frequency is dependent on these things. So, all we need to do is to change either C or L. So, either we are using a variable uh, capacitor or variable inductor and slight modification of the values of capacitance or inductance will eventually change the frequency of transmission. Apparently, this allows a better quality. Now, in practice, um, in the United States, frequencies from 88,000 kilohertz to 108,000 kilohertz. This is the bandwidth of all the FM transmission, for, uh, frequency modulation. It's divided, so it's 20,000 difference between them. So these 20,000 is divided into 100 channels. So each channel would be 200 hertz, um, kilohertz wide. So every station has the main um, frequency, for instance, like 88,100. And from 88,100 plus 100 and minus 100, so from 88,000 to 88,200 would be a channel for that particular radio station, which means we can accommodate no more than 100 radio stations which are transmitting FM signal. Well, at least in the vicinity where this particular signal is um, can, can, be, can be received. Now, since this is a higher frequency, see this is 88,000 up to 108,000. This is up to 1600 kilohertz. So AM is significantly less frequent. So that's one way, then basically that's one way to explain why we cannot really uh, transmit higher signals. So there are some historical considerations. Quite frankly, I don't know. Maybe if we will use uh, this very, very high uh, frequency of transmission and use amplitude uh, m uh, modulation, maybe it would be fine as well. But anyway, historically, this is the range, and this is a, uh, much lower than this. So this allows, just because of the frequency, it allows to do much better quality. And also, this principle of using frequency modulation rather than amplitude modulation makes this particular type more um, stable as far as uh, radio noise is concerned. For some reason, which um, let's not actually get into this, this is probably for professionals, the amplitude modulation is more sensitive to noise than the frequency modulation. Okay, so we covered that. So you understand the graph. Now, if you will go to the website uh, unisor.com and look at the comments to this lecture, you will see better graphics than, than these two, obviously. All right. And the last thing um, uh, uh, which I wanted to talk about is the implementation. Well, I, I did actually touch the implementation of the frequency transmission should be arranged using variable capacitor or variable um, inductor. And now, what, what seems to be the result of this is that we can represent much better quality, up to 15 uh, kilohertz frequencies will be correctly reproduced and interpreted on the receiver side 
um, using this methodology. Uh, <coughs> well, that's it. Um, uh, for AM modulation, um, I also had a lecture which describes AM modulation as basically an equation. Well, this type of equation. I mean, how it's actually looking mathematically. Now, I will um, have another lecture, probably the next one, uh, which will be uh, about how FM modulation looks mathematically. Um, I have to warn it a little, a little bit more um, complex than for AM um, modulation. For AM modulation, we just added um, the sound wave uh, equation, something like this, to amplitude. In this case, we have to add it to a frequency, but that's not as simple as this. So I'm preparing this lecture, that would be our next one, and that would be an interesting lecture for people who are more familiar with mathematics, because there will be derivatives, integrals, etc. Um, just to emphasize once more that for any kind of a physics study, you do need mathematics. Uh, definitely calculus, vector algebra, and something like this. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>